If you're tired of the standard business and marketing fundamentals, frameworks, and funnels, <laughs> you need a little mischief. Get ready to turn up the volume on the CEO Mischief Maker podcast, where you access conversations with seasoned business owners who have smashed through mindset barriers, innovated the standard boring business and marketing playbooks, and executed future-paced strategies with bleeding edge tools and tactics to micro fail their way into massive success and growth. We are Mindset Impact Strategic Catalysts, helping innovative entrepreneurs focus. We are CEO Mischief Makers. Ready to make a little mischief? Hey, hey, CEO Mischief Makers. It is Friday. And I don't love Fridays because it's the end of the week and I stop work because I work whenever I want and don't work whenever I don't want. Uh, but I love Fridays because now we get down to the practical level. So welcome back to the conversation with the amazing Hirsch Reppen. Uh, Hirsch, welcome back. It's Friday. Woohoo! All right. TGIF. <laughs> I do like Fridays because I also kind of work when I, when I want, but I do like the fact that on weekends, people are a little quieter. And they expect you sometimes not to work, so you can sneak it, sneak away, and do stuff, get stuff done, and be productive. So I like yes, the weekend. Absolutely, same here. So, all right, if you have not listened to the first two episodes that Hirsch and I have shared together, you need to go back and listen because what we're going to talk about now, um, I think you you can definitely listen to this independent of that because the things we're going to talk about, anyone can use to focus their messaging. And to me. Uh, conversational design and customer experience are what we're going to talk about here. The, the results of that and how can I get design the best conversation that represents me as a business owner and that allows for my customers to have the best experience possible with me and my brand. So with that in mind, Hirsch, take me through what we ended talking about uh, in the last episode, and that was innovating all these different things and different experiences we bring to the table. And how can we now use that in our messaging, especially from you as a message therapist? Yeah, that's, that's, that's an awesome direction to go, MK, because the, the fact is, you know, I used to write all kinds of different things for people. Uh, when you're a writer for hire, you know, some people need a commercial, other people need a press release, a bio, whatever it was. And I realized as I started working with people really on the creation or the revision of their image was that there's something that I call the spine of their message. The spine of their message is like a mission statement or a bio that really captures and puts into language who they are and what they do and why. But there are limitations because for example, let's say you're at a at a industry function and you're you're meeting people and you're introducing yourself and you've given your, you know, very brief, I don't I think 30 seconds is even too much. You've given your 20 second, you know, explanation. It's not even a pitch. It's a it's a, a presentation of who you are so they know. Oh, okay. You know, uh, he's the message therapist. He works with people on their message and he really listens to them. That's kind of, that's, that's good enough. Um, but how do you take what's in that bio, in that spine of your message and really apply it to myriad situations that could come up at any moment and could be anything? So somebody says, oh, you know, uh, do you do you have a talk that you give? Uh, well, a talk is a, an application of your knowledge in some in some way. You would want to be able to describe that talk, assuming you have it. You'd want to have it, assuming you like to, to get on stage and present stuff. Um, so that's one application. You may be looking to book more meetings for yourself and you have a nice email list, but you know, you need to reach out and get people's attention. It's like I have I have a, a friend who's um who's a, a financial planner, and she started by telling me all these all these new laws that people need to be aware of, and they she wanted to include them in her newsletter. And I said, you know, the, your audience doesn't care about the laws. They because she's like I offer this free thing, and they don't nobody pays attention to it. And I said, well, 
if you get their attention right away with two or three lines of, you know, something really powerful, they will go to that thing. But, you know, there's 10 new laws and I'm already out. I don't want to hear about the yep. 10 new tax laws. I don't, I can't, my, I don't have a bandwidth for it. So the application to the various um, platforms is probably a natural next step when you're building your, what I call your brand vocabulary or your brand language. It's almost like learning another language, except to our earlier conversations, it's your language. It's unique to you. You're innovating it. It is, it is an, a representation of a completely individual, you know, uh, uh, thought-provoking person who really wants to you know, make an impression and communicate something new and fresh that is unique to them. And so that that's the idea is to say, well, where, where are you going to be or should be? Is it virtually? Are you on LinkedIn? Are you in person at certain conferences that you have to go to for your business? Well, how do you present there? You know, Sometimes I feel like I'm an image, like a, like an image consultant too. How do they dress? How do they, you know, you know, should they, but, but people have, you know, once they let that go, it's amazing to watch people present themselves because now all of a sudden they're, they may actually give some thought to that, uh, how they dress, what they wear, what they say. And so, uh, and so that's, that's a good, a good next step. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So we're going to keep the same message, at least of what we do the same. I'm not meaning the same message, but the, the same words in relation to what we do, but we do mm. need to adapt them to the audience we're going to present. So right. if you're doing a one-on-one -on -one in a, in a particular business or in a particular conference setting, and you're just meeting people at a conference, that's one-on-one -on -one or one to maybe three people, four people. Um, if you're on stage, you're talking about yourself to many people. Um, if you're in a phone call or trying to do LinkedIn direct messaging or any kind of anything like that, you're really you're really focusing on one person at a time. Even though many people are going to hear this, you're speaking to the person who will resonate most with what you're saying. Um, and that's really where I I switch. Here's another mindset shift that I need people to make. And, and just bear with me here if you're listening. Yeah. Yes, we need avatars. Yes, we need to understand who our audience is. All those things, I, I get it. But I got to tell you, I expect people and I help people focus on what they want to say and who they are and what's most important to them as a business owner. Because just like we talked about in the last episode, that if I embrace that and I am unique about that and I am transparent about it and I am authentic in presenting who I am in my messaging, People who need that will resonate with it and will come to me. And I will actually have to do less marketing, outreach, you know, outbound, because people will see that message. As long as you can get it out there and have awareness of it, they'll see it and they will be attracted to it. So it's similar to attraction marketing, but I'm really using more of an innovation standpoint and embracing mm -hmm. who you are, not trying to tack, uh, attract who you want and focusing your message on the outside, on them. Be who you are, do it. Because I'm telling you, the native digitals that are coming up in this world are, uh, and native digitals are um, those, those people who are in the world and they don't know anything but digital. They don't know anything but online. They don't know anything but cell phones. They've never lived without yeah. those things. Those are native digitals. They don't want your marketing funnel to be pushed to them. They have very strong antenna that can sense and tell market speak and they don't want it they want community they want authenticity they want to hear from the founder of the company so please make that mindset shift <laughs> so anyway that was my long way to say how do we then take that message and you you made a great way to actually get us to uh, hone down on it you know drill down on who we are and embrace that but yet also talk about um, kind of changing it a little bit based on the, the platform or the presentation or where we are. H how do you do that? How do you, how do you, there's how a do you little, do that? there's a little subtlety involved there, a little nuance because 
What we want to do is make sure that our image and our message are consistent. So, uh, like you said, you you people you want these these people these very savvy, very digi digitally uh, oriented uh, audiences to pick up the same vibrations from wherever they find us. Now, yep. if you go if you if you're sitting in a board meeting. Uh, and you're wearing a suit and you have a, uh, a little mini computer for a little uh, iPad in front of you and you have stats on there, then, you know, yeah, that's the vibe. That's the vibe. But you're still you. You're still you inside that outfit. If you leave to go play baseball, you're going to put on, you know, clothes that are going to be more comfortable to play baseball in. You're going to have a mitt. You're going to have a cap and a bat. So at that point, you're going to look like not a baseball player, you're going to look like you playing baseball. So it's, it's like when you think of actors who are so distinctive in their personality that they almost don't lose themselves in the role, right? Yeah. You, you know, when, you know, if it's, if it's Harrison Ford, you, you know, you know, if it's Tom Cruise, you know, and it's not about being a good actor or not. It's just having a persona that's so strong, you know, Kevin Hart, you know, who it's, you know, it's Kevin Hart then, you know, that's preferred to somebody like Daniel Day-Lewis who lose himself in a role, not even re Gary Oldman, not even recognizable yes. in the role. Yes. That's great for actors on social media and in the, in the real world as well. We don't want that. We want to be recognizable. So think of yourself that way. Think of the fact that when you're on LinkedIn, you're more in that boardroom a little bit, but it's still you. It's still you. You're on Facebook. You're a little more at that softball game, but it's, but it's still you. You're on Instagram. You're kind of maybe doing on a little bit of a, of a stage or you're, or you're in a photo studio, but it's still you. And you have to make sure that that you comes through. And that's what I, what I help with at that level. I do, I use what I call a brand voice guide because I feel like the same way brands that I worked with, those big brands all had style guides. They had language guides that were certain language you, but it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't personal. So it didn't have to be as deep, but I create for my clients a brand voice guide so that they can see how to, it's almost like, you know, like I have a nine-year-old daughter. She, she goes and plays Roblox and she plays these games and the characters all have different clothes that they pick what they want to wear. So I look at the brand voice guide as being that way. Here's your persona when you're doing a book a meeting email campaign. Here's your persona when you're on LinkedIn. Here's your persona when you're uh, speaking at a certain uh, to a certain audience. And we develop it based on where they're likely to be. That's why no two brand boy voice guides are the same format even. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. I love the way you put that, that Thank it you. really, it really is that you are still you. You're just putting yeah. on the costume that fits the environment you're speaking in. Yeah. You're That's suiting pretty up. Much it. You're suiting up for whatever, you know, you're an astronaut, you know, look at, go look at, go look, go watch a, Apollo 13. Right. Yes. And look at some of those scenes. That's Tom Hanks, right? That's Tom Hanks. If he were that astronaut. It's yes, not a absolutely. different person entirely. Yes, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. You can see Tom Hanks in every, every character he plays. I can see Meryl Streep even, even though she can yeah. do amazing accents and all that. Of you course. still see her mannerisms, the way she speaks, the way her mouth moves, the way her hands, the gestures, yeah. that's still her. Um, she just embodies the yeah. role with that, it carries it with that. Yeah, I, that is a great way. So everyone listening, to be able to take that and try and dive into and embrace who you are and bring you to your marketing and to your business so that people can have an, an opportunity to get to know you. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't do this, uh, I used to not do this and um, not embrace it. You get nightmare clients. I'm just going to tell <laughs> you because they have no clue who you are. You have to adapt to them and you may not like what they're doing and how they do things. So. You will get nightmare clients if you try and be the perfect fit for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, if you 
embrace who you are, I'm going to tell you right now, you will repel some people. It's just a fact of life. We don't get along with everybody and that's fine. I would rather have a small group of people who absolutely love what I say because they say the same thing so we can have an amazing, engaging conversation rather than a huge group of noise out there yes. talking about all different things and really couldn't care less about what other people are saying. Better, better um, to repel them up front and have them just not feel like you're for them and vice versa, you know, then, then to, and sometimes we've all probably had this experience where we are, we are kind of trying to be ourselves, but we want this gig that somebody has a gig and it's probably not the right gig for us. We have to twist ourselves a little bit to get the gig. I can almost guarantee that that gig is not going to go well. If it does, you're getting by, by the skin of your teeth and, and, probably it's not your best work. And so even if you deliver what they asked, even if you twist yourself inside out and you suck it up and you, either because you needed the money or, or because you, you thought you wanted to challenge yourself and you could handle it, you know, you could take it. Um, you're still, you're st even if it's what they want, it's still not necessarily what you wanted to put out. And so, you know, that's part of that, being yourself even in a different outfit is, you know, it's okay to be a fish out of water. It's okay to try something new, but be that entire self, be a hundred percent you in that suit, because you're going to, you're going to need that. And you may need to say no more than you would like at first. So. Absolutely. So is there anything else that, uh, that we need to attach to what you just said? Uh, to get even a little deeper or a little further along in that, like you call a brand voice. Um, are there any tools or questions I can ask myself to, uh, and just a few, to, uh, to really get that deep and understand what parts? Um, I, do you recommend, you know, writing down pros and cons or, or you know, uh, comfortable with and uncomfortable with kind of ideas? Yeah, I'm a big fan of writing by hand. And I did reach a point when I was writing screenplays that I, I stopped writing screenplays by hand. It made much more sense to use Final Draft. And, uh, you know, and I do have somewhere in the house a screenplay that I wrote by hand that I never, that I never transcribed to into any other document. So, but I would say that writing things out by hand is a very good way to experience something. In other words, like I do it, I do this all, all every day. I write notes from my conversations and mo and all my, all my conversations with clients or even prospective clients are recorded. So they're recorded for reference. I send them to the person I met with, but I'm writing notes anyway. I have a pencil in my hand all the time when I'm, when I'm recording, when I'm right, because I feel like it's an experience, it's an extension of the experience. So I would, I would throw that out as a, as a good exercise and a good way to get to go deeper because you can't help it. You're, it's very, it's very uh, visceral. It's very, it's very uh, uh, tactile experience, you know? Yeah, definitely. Do you have any, um, I guess not necessarily results, but any advice for people as to why this is important? Any any idea or, or example you can give us from someone who didn't get this deep and really understand to to be themselves no matter what costume or what no matter what clothes they're wearing, and someone who just adapted to you know whatever they need they thought someone needed from them? Can you contrast those two things for us at all? I can contrast them without without specifically pointing to someone whose life went miserably awry because they didn't listen to me, if that was what they, <laughs> yes. you know, um, and there are, you know, and there are uh, success stories, you know, there's uh, case studies on my site and stuff, but, but, but I would say that, um, that there are situations that I've seen where to follow up on what I was saying before, where you thought you could take it, 
there are a lot of times when we feel that the reasons for us to be out of our skin or uncomfortable in our skin outweigh the benefits of being comfortable or happy. And that simply means that, for example, we, we, have, we have debt or we have family obligations or we have uh, things we promised. And all those things are good reasons to, to, to do stuff and to work. But we're going to pay a higher price than we realize later because the discomfort of not, of not being yourself can really wear down on us in ways that we don't, we don't realize. And, you know, if you've been in business long enough, you've either seen people who were in that job forever you know, let's put it this way. I like the positive. I prefer positive over negative, you know? So I would say, look at, look at someone who loves their job, you know, and it could be any job. It does it. It's not because they're not necessarily doing it for the money. They're, they're, they're not necessarily doing it for the status or even the appreciation, but you see people every day probably who are really happy in their job and there's a glow about them and there's a lightness about them because they are exactly where they're supposed to be. And so much time we spend worrying about whether we're in the right place or the wrong place. And you've always heard that thing, right place, right time. You know, we're all looking for that. But if we spend the time to figure out what that's supposed to feel like, then we'll find it and we'll find that place. And then we'll do everything we can to stay there. And that's worth fighting for. And that's, that's where our energy should go. Um, because that's where the long-term benefits are, I believe. Okay, hold on. If your mindset was shifted, you were inspired to innovate, and you were spurred into action, don't just move on with your day. Focus, my friend, and take a few minutes to visit ceomischiefmaker.com to learn more about the value that was shared with you today. Please act now and create some CEO mischief of your own.